So next question was like uh, about uh, about the how. Uh, so what I wanted to first start addressing was like, how does it change the, and I know this has been addressed in other discussions and other questions that have been asked today. Uh, but if you want to add anything, like how does the blockchain uh, change the business paradigm or what as a business going into uh, doing my business on blockchain tomorrow, what should I think about? Or, or how does it impact changing? And you could take an example of something and that might be a better explanation of that. Like the internet. Yeah, I mean, it's like, how, is it, how did the internet change a company at all? Like, it's like it changed everything, right? Like, for example, like, I was like, internet, if you take internet as an example, then right. the way it changed e commerce was it basically changed your supply chain. Well, for one thing, e commerce was great on the internet. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> but it, it changed the supply chain for any existing business that wanted to do e commerce. And the first thing they really need to, needed to change was their supply chain on how the warehousing and how the logistics work. Right. But similarly, like if, uh, if an ad, you know, like a publisher wants to get on the blockchain <laughs> or an advertiser wants to buy through blockchain, uh, what are the things that you think would be the first things impacted and we should think about? It? Visibility. Day one, like, you know, does Group M want everyone to know, you know, how much they're charging for, you know, any traffic or something like that? Like it's, you're going to have to have a way of what we have at this place. Right. Because there's still going to be business differentiation. Right. Like, but we're not going to sell like technical HLP or all things that are true. But I mean, uh, the best word is private. No? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. We're not actually entering. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what is interesting though is there are actually a lot of things to be with it. There are a lot of things we would have to be with it. Um, they're not really changed, but we wouldn't make the story of what much change. We definitely would have to be with it. Um, I mean, I think, I think Adstock Tesla is basically an example. That's where that network effect is going to boost the entire ecosystem. You know, even though we have, uh, in some markets, we have, you know, 10% of the whole overall traffic, so we have a very good we have a very good idea of where the problems are and stuff. It's still better for us to share that information with the so we have better so we have better So you improve the quality of the ecosystem. Um, that's that's where you speak. But there are things like you're not going to give up your actual in terms of how to turn the content. Oh right, yeah. I mean that's well, that's then advertise, yes, right? right. Like, no one's saying you're gonna do that. But there are a lot of things you would be willing to do uh, you know, to basically hit up and down the line, especially in our competitors. So this, so it's that line that a company needs to figure out. Like what, what is, really what like is, is you know, thing that like what is that going to be on the like they would probably put that data on private blockchain right. that's in their system, but you know what does that you almost see is like there's going to be some data in the private, there's going to be some in the consortium, there's going to be some in the public, and like. Companies are going to figure out it's like where, what piece of the data are going to go where. And yeah, what's going to happen to start off with, I think, this is how we see the first round, talking yeah. as, you know, some schlub that's here, um, <laughs> is going to be, I think they're going to start off holding on a lot of stuff in private blockchain. So you can hear. And it's going to take a copper level to start pushing some more of that, you know, out of the consortium of the private blockchain. And, 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 and there's some that's going to be private, right? Some oh, yeah. Like, you know. Well, it's going to be like, oh, these guys are kicking up what's going they have access to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we're in like later this week. Um, but a lot of, well, I think everybody's sitting here, if you're sitting here at part of a large company, like your bleed us blockchain thing, and then, you know, I have people in my company that are bringing in, you know, what, what this damn Bitcoin thing is. So, and and that, that's, that's kind of where we're going to have to feel like, through that process. And so I think you're going to see a lot of companies, not just through them, but up and down chains are going to hold a lot of their data internal. Oh, it's it's every company. You've got to figure that out. Yeah. It's not just you. I think about consumer aspects. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking about consumer aspects to this. This is you can type into a transfer of value in the UNI or transfer of the exchange of value between advertisers and publishers in order for personalization or for your actual coupons, whatever the value transfer is. Like, there's some of that, some of that data is not. 
So we don't want all of that information to be quite as good. And that we, we do not yet enough talk about the challenge that was created in the consumer journey. So I was just, that's, I still see that as a um, big gap, right? And it's, it's absolutely to do with the, you know, it's not just about the chain type of change, but obviously, what's the, the how, how, how are we using the technology to obfuscate to control data? Right? That's a use case that we haven't really described to talk about yet. It's one that I think we, we, we need to. It's kind of like on the Bitcoin, like you don't know who I am, but you know how much money I have. Uh, uh, it, okay, everyone, if you're doing anything shady, Bitcoin is not anonymous. SSPs to talk to SSPs to talk to DSPs all over like there's it's all over okay there's hidden fees and there's ad tech there's there's the, the the ad tech tax that everybody I'm sure has probably heard about but then there's like if you want to really get nerdy there's like soft floors and first price auction and second price auction all of that is going to be it's going to fall like dominoes it's going to be insane it's going to change everything you know about how we transact media today. Like it's because everything will be transparent and I don't know where you're going to hide your fees because it's all going to be in these, it's all going to be transacted be in a ledger. So I, I'm, I'm not excited to see it, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to see this whole paradigm shift in advertising. You're not excited. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess how it's going to change, uh, you know, businesses is cost savings through like reducing the operational burdens of having to manage that supply chain that may subscribe. <coughs> so all that value that's being consumed by the intermediaries that are just taking this tax and maybe not even adding value. Um, they could be misrepresenting inventory. They could be creating, you know, remnant inventory sold programmatically doesn't mean more inventory or extra inventory. So when you sell an impression in the exchange, it somehow turns into a thousand impressions. <laughs> And like, if you tap into all the DMPs, there's 160 million Americans in the market now for a Nissan. That's not true. None of that is true. So I'm excited to see the change in our industry because if we don't change it, um, there's a logical conclusion, which is Amazon, Facebook, Google, and not us. So I want to change it. I'm a little skeptical on that. The internet also had the same promise. We got the exchanges, and the promise was that it's going to be a very um, it's going to be a level playing field and we'll bring the real market value. But this, every time that happens, we see uh, another set of intermediaries come and replace every the previous intermediaries. The exchanges are, <laughs> the exchanges are centrally controlled, though. Like, yeah. like that, every time you bring a centrally controlled actor into play, so what I'm saying is that that problem. every time something new comes up, one of the things that is always sold is that the intermediaries will go away. Or we see a new set of Indian intermediaries come in, and I'm just saying that we, we will, but they're going to be fundamentally because you're already talking about multiple chains. You're already talking about interoperability in some other system that's going to connect to multiple chains. Yeah, but I mean, the internet created ad tech, right? <laughs> so <laughs> this is what that's going to do, right? There's going to be like a whole new ad. There will still be intermediaries. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. so so we'll add add yeah, it, yeah. I would. That's right. There. I think this blockchain actually. Will, will create an open market and there will be intermediaries, but there'll be it'll be I mean it'll be transparent and there won't be any hidden shady action going on. That's I, think, I think so there's value in scale. And programmatic is something that we all want to get behind, but we just don't trust it. We don't trust those programmatic channels. And we don't trust just letting algorithms trade for us. So we get that. But in you know, let's say the evolution of the internet and the blockchain internet, uh, Intermediaries will provide liquidity and they'll be transparent and they'll provide value and scale and reach. So if they take a, you know, 
respectable margin, not 60% margins, um, and they provide you know, scale, then they could survive um, if the industry decides to shift to a more you know, blockchain-centric uh, infrastructure. Like Salesforce doesn't take a piece of Exxon's value just because it's using the platform. It's a flat fee, right? Like it's, it's that model is what needs to start happening in ad tech, right? I think you know blockchain and self sovereignty. Um, I think you know it's, you, you can't really fight this. Um, it's happening. So there's different layers of understanding, and as people start to better understand this technology, um, they they understand the potential and the value, and and they'll think differently about it.